uh, Skupi was destroyed. Skopje moved on top of this hill. They started building here. First fortification. The rocks show first fortification from the Greek period of time, the Macedonian period of time of Philip II. Philip II actually was born about 25 kilometers close to Kumano. Then it's the Byzantine time. The Byzantine time was here the castle of Justinian Prima, Justinian I, who also was born within the borders. Uh, then comes the Roman, uh, the Roman, sorry, the Byzantine, and then what you see around here is from the Turkish time. Skopje wasn't big as, as this. It was the downtown area, a little bit from the sides here. And that was about it. The rest was all agricultural fields. But when it hit, it hit the downtown area. I will show you what was reconstructed when we go inside because we see it from the top. But I will tell you the two meanings about the earthquake. The tragic part about the earthquake was it was not a lot of casualties. It was about two, two and a half, three thousand people. But they call it a devastating earthquake because of the following thing. July 26th, during Tito Yugoslavia, we used to have two holidays, or at least three holidays if you can spend the summertime. One you take with your wife and you go somewhere exotic. Second one you take your family into Yugoslavia, into Croatia, into Greece. And the third one you take all the family, grandchildren, whatever, somewhere in Okrid, whatever, for a long weekend. Now July 26th was the heat, se heat season of summer holidays. So you have mom and dad on a holiday, you have the kids home with the grandchildren. Mom and dad somewhere abroad, they stay alive. So the Children devastating part is almost 20,000 families were divided. Hmm. That was the tragic part of the earthquake. It's called Kala Fortress. People who did the Akanastasis and they put their signature, the three people, on yeah. whatever they did. That's Very interesting. interesting. Something to recommend. Yeah. No room to put the twelve apostles on either side of the iconostasis, so they put them on the ceiling. Very amazing. Eighteen seventy five or eighteen seventy six. Uh, 1899, 1896 is where the, the wood carving was finished and um, through the years it's been renovated. The earthquake hit a lot, destroyed one of these walls and actually what's interesting is this wall here, one, as you see it's renovated newly. Mm -hmm. This was all donated by the American ambassador. What about the church tower? Is that this is 1934? Yeah, 1934 is the church tower was built. Tower. They, they didn't have a tower, but they would just hit it with an iron bar. The streets were divided at one point by crafts. Now, there, in every Turkish market, you have four major things. You have the mosques in the middle. You have the Turkish hammam, the baths. You have the hotels, the caravan sarays, the ans. You have the bezistan, which is the closed market. And you have the bazaar, which is the open market. This Turkish market has the bazaar, which is all the way down to the end. In the middle, you have the bezistan. We have two hammam, oh sorry, three, three, two hammams, two baths, and three hotels. So we're gonna go in one, just to see it. And I'll explain a little bit more over inside about now. The three hotels, holiday inns at that time, were like this. <coughs> the information booth, they would get all the information, what's trading in the west, what's trading in the east, as they were passing each other. So he would probably know the prices of, uh, I don't know, silk in uh, Istanbul as he was going to, to trade, uh, I don't know, uh, cents over in, in Rome. So this was where the crossroads used to hit in these places. You've seen him in Egypt, you've seen him in Istanbul, you've seen him all over the place. Wherever the Ottoman Empire was, they built this kind of kebab Their wives, they were coming in to make excellent shoes.